Alright, this is Luke from Low Lives and you're watching Morgan Richards interviews. Hey, I'm Morgan Richards from Radio Cardiff, here at Heads Above the Waves. I'm very pleased to say I'm joined now by a drummer who's always laying down a beat. It's of course the wonderful Luke Johnson. How's it going, man? Hey, man, you good? Yeah, yeah, wicked. Yeah, how's things? Good, a little chilly, a uh, little bit wet, but it's, <laughs> it's good, man. We're uh, currently plugging away on a tour through the UK, and um, it's sort of circumstances meant that we're headlining a tour that we never intended to do, so <laughs> it's it's been interesting, but it's honestly been awesome, the outreach and being able to pull together a tour last minute, so mm. yeah, can't complain. Yeah, great to hear. <laughs> Uh, so Luke, you've been a man involved with various music outlets over the years, playing in a whole host of bands since the late 90s. After being in the industry for so long, does it feel quite refreshing starting from scratch again now with Low Lives and building this really from the ground up? It does. Um, many reasons. So one being that, well, first off, I never, I said I'd never start a band again. I said that when I was like, after Beat Union. I was like, if Beat Union's done, I'm not starting a band again. I'm just gonna, if I'm play, I'm gonna play with people that like are established or, you know. And so that's when I ended up obviously doing profits. And so, basically, started no devotion after that. And like, you know, we were kind of all in survival mode, so we were doing that. And and it was kind of like a little bit different. Um, and then, during that time, my first uh, child was you know born so I was like fuck I gotta get real man I better get a real job you know <laughs> quit this tour in Malarkey so um, as far as I was concerned I was done I wasn't doing music um, and then just it's like that itch that needs scratching and you just can't get rid of it you know and I was like I gotta do something so like you know I did a solo EP and you know I did that with Stu and, and Bo Bichelle and you know, I did a few things that just never quite scratched the itch. And so when I met Lee and we started Low Lives, it was like, let's just make some music. And everything started happening so easy and organic that it was like, wow, this is really easy. You know? So we were like, all right, let's fucking carry on. And we put together a couple of lads of friends in the band. And, and here we are back in the van again. And I think like, as long as, you know, we're sort of like prepared to get our hands dirty, it's gonna be good. So I mean, it, it feels good. And like, you know, we're kind of slugging it around in a van sleeping on floors and doing whatever we can and you know it's uh it's been all right you know and considering we were coming over here to support the used yeah as the first tour and the band's only been around since october of 2017 it's uh you know we've had a decent turnout at the shows i mean we put the tour together in maybe two days like we got you know we got cancelled on the third hmm. and by the sixth like the morning of the sixth, I think we announced like shows, which is <laughs> insane. So yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's exciting. And at this point in my life, I'm just trying to uh, enjoy every day and everything that we're doing. Like rather than like looking at what's next, or you know, I'm trying to kind of just live almost by the hour. You know mm. what I mean? Like this this interview came up a couple of days ago. I'm like, that's wicked. You know what I mean? Like we get to connect again. Yeah. And so yeah, everything, man. You know, taking nothing for granted and just going out there and having a good crack yeah. oh that's sweet and even though low lives seem to come out of nowhere a lot of people have said that there's almost a super group feel to the band of yourself and stitch d and all the others having so much experience yeah. you've mentioned how everything really came about has there been something you've been working on for a really long time getting the lowdown so basically it all came about from instagram i didn't actually really know lee um well some of you guys know the stitch mm. but um, I didn't really know Lee that well. We just kind of followed each other and knew each other's bands. Um, and one day he commented on a photo of mine and I replied back to him. And then uh, we started direct messaging on Instagram. So how's the band going? He's like, oh, we're done. You know, we're, we're kind of finished. He's like, I think I'm starting something new. He's like, I want to do a band kind of like Basement or like, you know, early Foo Fighters. Like, he's like, I want to go a bit more grungy. And I was like, oh, wicked. He's like, we're looking for a drummer. And I was like, all right. I was like, well, let's let's meet up and have a beer. So we met up and had a pint, and he was doing it with another lad at the time who was another guitarist, and 
we hung out a couple of times and it was like oh these dudes are cool and like they liked me and so it was like that was like the first step and then they sent me songs and I sent them songs I'd written and we were kind of both on the same page and so that was cool um, and then the other dude ended up sort of like leaving to pursue something else it was just me and Lee and I've got a studio in my house so um, we just started like writing some songs in the house and they come together real well mm -hmm. so oh, cool maybe we should try and do these in a studio and rehearse like see if we can play the stuff so then we got our mate Steve on bass and he came in and we, we were doing it as a three piece we tried to be a three piece at first and trying to be a loud noisy three piece is quite difficult so you know hats off to all those bands that managed to pull that off so we didn't want any tracks no click no backing track like we weren't trying to do we're trying to be like straight up raw yeah. like in your face and really aggressive you know so um we decided we need to get that fourth person and and Bo, who recorded our album um he said he knew jackson and he was just like jackson's looking to play in another band so we tried out with jackson it was wicked and it kind of came together and everybody's got a good temperament so that all started in uh, October 2016. I went and got married. <laughs> so I was like out of commission for like a month from just going like partying with my wife. And then came back and then it was like kind of Christmas and all that stuff. So like we'd written a couple of songs and batted a couple of things back and forth, maybe five tunes. Uh, but we really started getting our heads down in, in sort of January 2017. Wrote all like yeah basically Lee was kind of picking up guitar tech work and popping in and out here but we basically got I want to say 20 songs by uh, by the summer and then we were kind of just hustling around trying to see if we could get a gig and so I hit up Stu from Gallows and he looks after Moose Blood he's the raw power lot and uh, sent him a couple of tunes and he hooked us up the show and sent it over to the Moose Blood guys and they loved it so they let us play with them at the Troubadour in LA which was the first show which coincidentally was in uh, October so we announced the band on October 1st so basically technically from conception to announcement was one year exactly yeah. with writing the songs we played that show and then we went in the studio in November and recorded the full length album which is being mixed mm -hmm. And it, it, along that way, then Dan from the Used hit me up and was like, mate, do you want to play a show with us? And that was like a three days notice. So we like jumped in at a quick show at the observatory in Orange County. And uh, and then we played a show in January with Sayasin. It was like, we were at three shows. I mean, tonight is our 12th show as a band. It's like really new. So, you know, everything's just been kind of like, what we're doing is not really saying no to anything. If it comes in and it makes sense, we're just like, yeah, man, we're just open to any conversation shows or whatever. So we've just been really open-minded with it and that's kind of brought us to here. Like we could have said, fuck it, let's spend the extra money changing our tickets and going on. Or we could just try and muscle it out and see what the crack is. And for us, the only real thing was if we can cover the petrol and the cost of the van whilst we're over here, because we borrowed gear from friends. Um, and so, you know, that was like basically we needed somehow to try and make between fees and merch like two grand <laughs> and we've managed to do it like we but we're basically able to in fees like thank god to rad promoters like who have helped us out we've managed to like get like enough decent fees to kind of pay for the van and then on top of that we uh you know we picked up like you know enough merch sales to sort of help with the petrol so somehow it worked out and then obviously we have this interview with you guys yeah. and we have a radio one session coming up so you know it was worth staying and fighting through it awesome yeah, yeah great to hear and of course everything is still really early days for the band if you're only releasing two singles so far uh, both having quite a grungy feel to them yeah. as you mentioned live you seem to have a whole catalog of tracks ready to go does this mean there's already a lot of plans in place for future releases yeah, I mean, technically, the album, the album is so close to done. I think there's like three songs left to mix on it. Yeah. Um, Bo Bushell, who recorded the album, like one of my good friends and also an absolutely amazing producer, done a ton of bands. Um, he just like really loved the band, so like cut us a good deal. We paid for the record ourselves um, so that we could shop it around. Uh, and basically, we. Um, we're three songs away from being done, but he's moving studios, so right. we gotta like wait a minute till we get back. And we had this tour, so the album's in the can. Um, we just picked up management, so we're with a company called Anger Management. They look after the used and a couple other bands. Um, and so right now we're just trying to find a home to put the album out. So once that's done, um, you know, 
we should be able to put the full length out and I personally hope that that would be this year like I know labels like a lot of lead time to put mm. stuff out uh, but as we're so early in the year I hope maybe a late summer if we can lock something in you know so the album is basically ready to go just okay. a couple songs with remix in and, and a mastering and we've got the artwork the name the, <laughs> the order like everything like is worked out so yeah. it's like you know it's no no time to waste <laughs> Here's hoping we hear it sooner rather than later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll play a few tunes in the van later. Sneak <laughs> well, awesome. And uh, of course, as you mentioned, this is really the first band project we've heard you in since you parted ways yep. with No Devotion. Of course, that whole period of time was quite a documented one, following on from Lost Profits and yep. everything surrounding that. Uh, before your departure, you did record half of No Devotion's first record. Reflecting on everything, are you really glad that you managed to move on with the rest of the guys and create a little bit more of music? Honestly, like, the, that record, like, it, it, it means so much to me. Like, I did ask you, I was like, what did you guys end up doing? Did you guys end up, like, just replacing all the drums on the record, getting someone else? He's like, no, he's like, you did most of the records we did that in New York um, you know and I, I told them like they, they understood like they knew that I was having a bit of a meltdown to be honest here because it's like you know all that stuff had happened and it was the most insane thing that I feel like could ever happen and my instant reaction in those kind of situations is I don't dwindle on stuff I like go into survival mode and I'm like all right this can't define us what's next so I definitely felt like I was rallying around the boys uh, early on and, and you know me and Stu started kind of writing a bit of stuff and then Mike came in and then Lee, and then before we knew it we were like fucking chugging along with songs and it was kind of like almost like an anesthetic you know it was like anesthetic to the, the pain and the problems yeah. or at least it was for me and so a lot of the dudes were maybe probably dealing with it at the time whereas I don't think I was so we moved along we played some shows, we got Jeff and like, you know, we did half the album and it was sounding wicked and we started off demoing in the Bronx studio and that was wicked and so Joby kind of let us like use his studio really cheap and hooked us up. So we demoed a bunch of stuff out and Stu recorded it and then kind of like it, it did go through many phases of like mixing and who's going to mix it and who's going to record it and it kind of changed shape a few times and it, um, it kind of got to this place where it was like a little bit more eclectic. And so when I told the dudes, like, I just remember being sat in my apartment with my, my wife and she was pregnant. And I was just like, I'm having a kid. I don't know how I'm going to provide for like, my family. So I was like, I think I've got to, like, figure out getting a real job and sort of bringing some money in, you know, trying to start a band over again, especially with all the baggage. And so we did the shows and I don't think the dudes were happy, but, like, I think they understood, like, you know, we were all boys. So it's like, you know, and I fucking love those dudes like my brothers. So it's like, you know, they got it. Um, and then like obviously I said to him like you should hit Phil up from kids you know he's a wicked drummer and he's probably around so like, maybe Phil can like pick up if we're going to do live tours and stuff and and then uh, and then they got um, I forget his name the lad from Block Party to do the other songs on the record and I mean when I listen to that record it's like it's mint I still feel ownership I still feel pride in it you know what I mean and it's like I still feel a part of the whole process so you know it I didn't think I'd be making another band after that. I thought, like, I'm done, you know what I mean? I hung it up, but it, you just never know, do you? You know what I mean? So, like, here I am. Um, and Stu's actually mixing a couple of the tunes for us, for you know, for this, and um, hopefully Lee's going to come to London show and stuff. And so, like, you know, it's we, we all still talk and we're all still buds. And, um, and, you know, I know that Lee and Stu have started like, working on a new record, so I think there'll probably be another, ch another record from No Devotion, so I'm excited for that, man. Yeah. I'm like, I wish them all the best, you know what I mean? Like, I fucking love those dudes, so. <laughs> Sorry, I'm swearing, you oh, probably can't use <laughs> Yeah, so. Sweet, fantastic. And with all that now, of course, it's going to be extremely busy in the near future, just getting low lives out there as much as possible. Yeah. And what else can we expect now coming up? I expect nothing. I, I honestly like I I, uh, I started so so. The, the, long story short, when I kind of stopped music, I started working for a company called Headspace, which is actually a British company that transplanted to Los Angeles. <clears throat> it's a mindfulness and meditation app, and it's fucking brilliant, man. And it's like a game changer. And so uh, we basically, you know, the company has grown and it's in a really good spot, but the sort of core teachings of that meditation stuff helped me to be more present like like less expectation and living more in the moment so 
alongside like working a real job and trying to kind of put the bread on the table and stuff for the family I also like learned this whole other set of skills in my life where you know we're kind of I'm just living day by day you know what I mean I don't expect anything and that's kind of one thing that I've tried to do with this band for me personally is like not expect anything just do the best you can and appreciate everything that happens and and just wherever it goes from there you know what I mean just be grateful for it and so I think a lot of other bands that I've been in in the past I've always been like what's next like can we headline Reading can we do this like what what's the next tour like will we get a number one will we get a top ten like so many like wishes for like things and so um, I've tried to learn not to do that and just kind of like enjoy every show and like meeting every person that we played with we've, we've been playing to about like 30 or 40 people a night which blows my mind that there's even that many people turning up you know so it's it's been real cool and just meeting all those people but I got tattoos on my ankles recently because um, we we had a llama come in from uh, Sammy Ling Monastery in uh, Scotland who who came and did some you know spoken stuff at Headspace at the office and he said one thing to me or oh, he said one thing to everybody in the room but it just like I called my, my buddy Dan and I was like you gotta tattoo this on me right now but he said no hope no fear and at first I was like no hope that's a bit bleak but then I thought like no that's right because he was saying like if you don't hope for something then you're not going to fear that you're not going to get it you know what I mean just like stay in the middle man just be and I was like yeah I'm not going to fucking hope for anything and then I'm not going to fear that nothing's going to just take it as it comes so I've just been living in that lane and it's actually wicked you know I, I feel I feel just great with everything that happens <laughs> the tour got cancelled and everyone was screaming in the van and I was just like it's alright we'll figure it out <laughs> so yeah just do it with a smile oh, perfect well uh, that's about it cheers Luke for taking time out thanks so much for having us man no my pleasure best luck now with everything and hopefully catch you again very soon thanks Morgan anytime cheers. thanks